Hi, this is Rajiv Parikh and this is the Marketing Best of the Week for the week of April 10th, 2013. Here are the highlights of this week's content. Twitter cards enable you to create your own rich media tweets. Which social network makes your customers buy? And our segment, Cool Ideas of the Week, which includes tips on content marketing, SEO, Instagram, and email marketing. A lot of great content for you this week, so let's get started. Use Twitter cards to create your own rich media tweets. This is by Adam Burrell in Social Media Today. Twitter is much more than a 140 character text experience. With this announcement, new Twitter card features allow marketers even greater capability than before to create media rich tweets. First, there's mobile app deep linking. You can now have people connect the content that they see in the tweet with the app that they might have on their smartphone. And if they don't have it, they can go directly and download it from their iTunes or Google Play Store from within that link. Then there are the new cards. That includes the gallery, app, and product cards. With the gallery app, you can see a collection of four different photos. This is augmenting the current photo card capability to create an even richer experience for marketers. There's the app card where you can have the app info, rating, price, icon, which is then downloadable via the iTunes store or the Google Play store. This will greatly enhance mobile utility and is something that's coming in a couple weeks and requires Twitter approval. Then for e-commerce marketers, there's the product card, where now you can have the image, description, and price, as well as custom fields in your tweet. This also requires approval. This is in addition to the three cards that are already in place. There's the summary card, which for any content marketer greatly expands that 140 character tweet or link by adding a 70 character title, a 200 character description, a link, and a thumbnail. There's the player card, which is just like the YouTube card. However, now you can have video coming from other places and have that video more effectively highlighted within Twitter. And then, of course, there's the photo one, which is a lot like the Flickr card, where you could have a photo in addition to your tweet and expand upon that. This is really smart for Twitter, the marketer, and the user, because now users can stay within the Twitter experience and still view your content. It's a lot like opening up an embedded YouTube video within a Google search, or the rich media embedding inside of Facebook. However, you still need to nail the 140 characters because no one's going to expand that video or expand that summary unless you have something that entices them. So check out the article. It's really important for marketers. Which social network makes your customers buy? This is by Dan Schleifer in the Harvard Business Review's hbr.org blog. B2B CEOs and CMOs are trying to determine how best to leverage social media. They're investing in social media monitoring, improving their cloud scores, uh, improving their content marketing and YouTube efforts. But does anyone ask if this social network is where prospects and customers are influenced to buy? While Facebook and Twitter are popular, these are unlikely to be places where people discuss actual problems, especially for B2B. This is where domain-specific networks are necessary, like discussion forums on websites or ones hosted by pro boards, for example. Dan's company, ChartIQ, makes a great example of this. They have software to analyze and annotate stock charts. There are users in Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. However, when they discuss trade decision software, they're typically elsewhere. So the company focused on this discussion forum called Stock Twits, because there they could share annotated stock charts. The company had three goals, customer development, brand awareness, and customer acquisition. With customer development, they spent time understanding the needs of their customer and market dynamics. They targeted users by listening, asking questions, and building relationships with influential ones. They were also looking for beta users. 
They found this was too hard to build on their own, so it was better to co-opt a community. They built brand awareness by contributing stock chart analysis to the community. This increased trust and led to customer acquisition. As the product matured, they integrated stock twits in to their chart IQ application. So now the community could work directly within their app. And as a result of building that trust and building that integration, they were able to increase their time spent per visit on their application from 16 minutes to 30 minutes. Now, they didn't forget about Twitter and Facebook. They just focused on where people discuss stocks. They didn't focus on metrics like likes and followers. Rather, they put their energy on customer acquisition. So my question to you is, what are you doing to look at where customers buy? And now our segment, Cool Ideas of the Week. Here are some great ideas compiled from all the articles in the Best of the Week newsletter. Let's start with improving your content marketing. There are three tips that we pulled from the 20 ones that were in this very well-written article. Number one, interview industry leaders and invite guest bloggers, a great way to expand outside your known community. Number two, share your reports, charts, videos, and white papers on Pinterest. Take advantage of that visual environment. Make content available on audio and video. Extend your content, much like how we're extending our newsletter on this video. From the SEO article, four SEO mistakes you should avoid. We're going to give you two recommendations. First, have a content marketing calendar and a dedicated team to do the work. Companies are always fighting fires, always chasing the next thing. You need a dedicated team because this is a long-term brand building process. Number two, do not copy the competition. Because if they're employing some bad practice, then the next Google algorithm change will not only hurt them, it will also hurt you. From the secondary CTA article, this is call to action. As you know, most of us are focused on primary call to action metrics, things like lead form fills or request for product demo. Don't forget about secondary calls to action such as subscribe to your content, or download your white paper, or even like this particular content. This gives you an opportunity to get their email address and then nurture the process for when that prospect is ready. From the Instagram marketing article, there's two great examples from the many that are presented. First, showing your product in action, like this one with GE, or showing a before and after type of photo. Great way to share your offering in a more visual manner. From the email marketing article, increase email opens by solving a problem for your prospect or customer. Much like this great example from Quib, which allows people to share what they're doing at work. They get 50 to 70% email opens versus the traditional 10%. Thank you for joining us this week. We hope you really enjoyed the content that we provided. We'd love to get your feedback, either comment below or via one of these channels. Please subscribe to this video as well as to our newsletter so we can keep this coming to your mailbox every single week. Hope you have a great time and look forward to seeing you next week.